we're going to talk about stripes or also known as stress bars and we're going to go over why they're called that and exactly what is the purpose of those stripes or bars on a discus the next question is why do some discus have crooked or broken bars are there strains without stripes or bars so we're going to answer these questions in this video all right so what is the purpose of discus having bars or stripes in the wild. Number one reason would be camouflage. You have to understand in the Amazon, the discus is a food fish and also it is heavily predated on by other fish. Think of it like a zebra or a zebra pack. It causes confusion. So not only does it help camouflage um, the discus in the murky tannin water, basically they communicate with their patterns and their striping. This allows them to let fish know when they are stressed or also happy or want to breathe. And that's another reason why the discus evolved with these stripes. The camouflage is very important because mostly the ones with the best stripes uh, tend to survive in the wild. All right, and then another reason is recognition. Um, because the discus in areas all look alike or pretty close to the same as far as coloration, uh, these distinct patterns or stripes actually let them recognize each other, uh, find a mate, and be able to recognize that mate out of all the discus in the area. So it's another reason they have them is to recognize each other, whether it's a, a female recognizing a male or a male wanting to protect his territory from another male. Here is another reason is also that um, the discus sometimes when they're happy you can see them flutter and stuff and those stress bars will come out now it mostly on the wilds but personally i think the stripes are cool and that's kind of how i've gotten back into the wild and breeding the wild because to me i'm more into the natural fish and a, a discus without stripes just to me personally you know this is a personal opinion does not look the same as it should um naturally all right next question why do some discus have broken or crooked stripes uh, this question was asked to me and i did a little research now one thing i did find is when these collectors are going out and and searching for discus they are looking for premier discus now they don't just pick up a bunch of discus and they want to sell those they know that there's a premium for a certain kind of discus and usually in the wild they are mostly straight stripes and round but that doesn't mean they're all like that so when you watch a collector collect they actually assess each discus and they want that perfect roundness and the straight bars and this comes down to natural variations right each discus is going to be a unique uh, fingerprint and that is just the way nature works and that is even goes into the wild where they have to recognize each other from a distance to know if it's a an adversary or a you know a mate or something like that so each one is very distinct and it can be very slight variations where the human eye might not notice it but in the discus world they're going to notice that slight variation and recognize that uh specific discus and who it is and you know if it's in its territory now breeders look for those natural variations and that's how we get these man-made strains they see something where it has a little more blue in the head or it has a little more red in it or so and then they breed that and they selectively breed that to get that fish and sometimes over generations it takes to get the fish they want um and that's something that you know as humans we do we we do that with our dogs and that's just something that we prefer to try to get something that we believe is desirable uh personally i think nature does it way better than we do i think that you know there's not much inbreeding in nature and that's mostly something a, a human trait that we try to we try to set strains and by setting strains we basically have to inbreed fish and that usually never ends well in the long run now now that's not to say that these fish that they pick out of the wild that they don't want to keep aren't quality fish because they are they're natural wild fish right but as it, as the human eye sees we want that perfectly round shape we want nice finish we want those straight stripes that's something that visually we look for in wild discus 
Um, but I know from breeding wild discus that you don't get straight bars on, just because a, a female has straight bars and a male has straight bars and they breed, that doesn't mean the offspring are gonna have straight bars. So it's actually, uh, I would say 50, 50, 60, 40, either way. Um, and you know, when I, when I select my next generation of breeders, I do look for those straight bars, but because the crooked bars sometimes, that does not mean it's a quality fish. That just means that that's a fish that I probably won't select to breed. Uh, but even sometimes I do pick those because it either has a unique shape to it or there's some kind of finage on it that I like, and I can breed that and still get straight bars on the next generation. But yeah, it's about 50, 50, 60, 40, either way with the straight bars and the broken bars. And to me, it's not a defect. I don't see that as a defect. I just would like to have the straight bars and breed that characteristic in my next generation. And um, I do choose for that in my, in my breeders. Okay, so next question. Are there strains, man-made strains without bars and stripes? Yes. Um, not in the wild because if that fish was in the wild it would um, probably be taken out really quick and would not be able to breed so what are some of the strains that are barless or do not have bars that we've created well just off the top of my head i can think of um, the ghost um, the pigeon blood and I believe it, it used to be called the Marble Red. When I started, that's what it was called, but smoking went out of style. So the uh, Pigeon Blood. The infamous Blue Diamond, which I used to breed a lot. Uh, one thing with the Blue Diamond is I've noticed, and that's why I stopped breeding it, was they were very prone to bloat. Um, it was something that I really struggled with, and I just came to the conclusion that's not something that I'm really interested in breeding that fish uh, beautiful fish I it was one of my favorites the blue diamond and that's one thing I have to say about the pigeon blood strain is it's one of the hardiest domestic strains you can get if I had a beginner ask me what I would choose or what I what I would recommend for their first discus I would definitely say the pigeon blood strain uh, just they just have something that they're very hardy fish so that's uh, something I would recommend but the Blue Diamond, uh, loved that fish. I really loved breeding it because it was the, the babies came out young and blue and it was gorgeous and I made a lot of money doing that. But ethically, I just couldn't do it anymore because of the bloating. And then earlier I said the ghost, um, uh, Snow White, I think pretty close, I'm not sure. So I really don't do the domestic or the man-made strains anymore. Um, I'm really into the, um, into the wild and and the main reason why is because of the striping the bars it's something that uh i missed in discus uh just something that i thought was very natural and should be there so that's the thing and my future breeding um uh, and i got some exciting news coming on that in a future video about shipping fish hopefully but we're working out details right now um uh, those stripes to me was, it was a no brainer. It's something, and here's the thing is I, I bred some wild uh, angelfish, some of the red shoulders, and I thought they were gonna be the hottest thing and nobody wanted those angelfish. They wanted the solid white or the yellows and stuff like that. And to me, that's not exciting to breed those. All right, so stats say that four out of 10 of you are left and you are my audience. You are my true audience and I really appreciate you guys watching this. And I just wanted to kind of tell you what I've been doing as far as on the back end, as far as the products. Uh, one thing that I've done is you know the Daily Delight was something you had to make at home. Well, we've actually made it freeze dried now. Now, I only have limited supply because these are test runs, but you can see it's a, and it actually performs a little better. Uh, fish go crazy for it. It's easier to apply to the glass. Um, it sinks really well once applied to the gl glass. So uh, I still like the frozen, but I believe that this is the next level and this will be on the website and you can purchase it. So I just wanted to kind of go over that, something I've been working on for the last month and uh, getting the freeze dryer and all that set up and getting all that 
put together has been quite a little bit of a challenge, but we've been testing and testing and this stuff is amazing. It's like next level. Uh, there's not a food like this on the market. So if you enjoyed this video, check out this next video. It is on the pecking orders. And it's something that I've been really studying for the last 30 years. And this video has done real well. So if you want to know more information on how discus communicate.